Okay, buckle in. I was gonna make this a serious one, but now it's just gonna be a big shit post. Okay, welcome to the official debut of. <coughs> <clears throat> oh god. Welcome to the official debut of House of MT. Uh, basically, this was a prequel to Life of MT based on the Christmas special I made in 2020. Before I get into what House of MT was and what it was going to be, I wanted to explain how it came to be. For this, we gotta go back to the ends of 2020, which was the best time of that year. It was a very fun Christmas, actually, despite everything that had just happened. It was the first white Christmas in a thousand years. We had the tree up, and my family had the wonderful idea of putting together a little Christmas town. At this time, I was already busy with my own projects, as always. I had the Rock of Fire Replay Countdown series going on, I was keeping up with our agate specials, and I figured out that at the end of the countdown, I wanted to make an awesome animation to premiere on Christmas Day. At first, I didn't know what I wanted it to be, so I randomly looked through old videos and decided to go with bringing back old characters from my channel's past. I love the idea that my overactive imagination would let us live all under one roof, and bam, the empty creation special was made. It was one of my proudest ideas, and the reception was really good as well. I'm still thankful for the support I got and the excitement that came with the making of the animation. Even if making the animation did take a lot of blood, sweat, tears, uh, cramming it in at different times to get stuff done, and like I actually crammed like the last few seconds of the animation on Christmas Day. <laughs> Because I, I had that whole, like, ending scene, um, yeah, not done, and th there was I, there was an epic finale I wanted to do, and I didn't get to do it, but, I mean, it was still cool. It was still fun animation, uh, very interesting uh, time while making it, and I'm just proud where it is now, honestly. Um, the idea and premise of it also stuck to me, and I loved it so much, I came up with the idea to make a miniseries that'll be attached to it as well like what Netflix does with everything. I got heavily inspired by our little Christmas town as well, did some thinking, wrote some things down, and House of Empty was born. I came up with this idea early enough to plan the whole thing so it would come out a few weeks after Christmas to stay as much in season as I could, and cause the series took place after Christmas. I had a countdown for this series as well, uh, now that I remember, and I premiered it on my old Rock of Fire server. Uh, I wrote a uh, script that I, <laughs> I actually got like, I, I actually got really dedicated. Uh, I wrote script after script, stopping one to start another. I took background pictures and videos, and even like started animating little bits. And I did like uh, like a little test bit. I, I think I actually did a full on little animated bit for uh, an episode that would take place on Agate. Damn, Jamie sure do love it here. Yeah, I, I took a bunch of background pictures and videos according to what I had written. And yet, in the end, school came along, my grades slipped, I redirected my focus, and House of MT, it faded away. I got way too confident, yet I still wrote what I wanted to be, uh, like, little two to three minute animations that I knew no one would watch more than the Rock of Fire replay videos, and I'm still not gonna let it fully disappear. So now I'm gonna proceed to bring this story to the public. If it can't be animated, then I will at least explain the story and read what was left of the scripts to keep this idea I love so much alive. And because it's really vital to the lore of Life of MT, of which I somehow can put more dedication behind, um, I'm just not as on top of it as I am with my other projects. And I kind of have to uh, stick to Life of MT because I took a lot of time gathering background pictures and videos as well as writing like 25 episodes of the series over the summer and that's not that's not even <laughs> the extent of the series there are, there are more than 25 episodes it's it's crazy i got a lot of crazy stuff planned so without further ado let's jump into house of mt before i start reading the actual series um i want to provide some background as to what the actual series is the premise basically follows me as my character MT, whose OC and favorite IP-based characters live together in my house, and I try to provide them with the best living experience that I can, and keeping things cheery and happy, you know, even after Christmas time. The series is heavily inspired by um, 
how Steven Universe Future played out. Um, there's a certain amount of episodes. I wrote just 10. And each one dealt with a specific set of characters. And eventually at the end, everyone is brought together for something big. And, and yeah, that's, that's basically it. I'm just going to read the scripts and kind of explain the stories. And maybe provide some new artwork as well. Alrighty, I don't understand why my mic quality drops as soon as I start like screen recording. But uh, it's a thing, so I, I, I can't really fix it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through House of MT, read the scripts. Um, as you can see, it's just, just full on script. And uh, I had the synopsis. I actually write Life of MT very, in a very similar way. Uh, except I have like the synopsis under the episode name. I just go ahead and write the script. For this, um, I want to deal with like a certain group of characters. So I would like note that down and then basic synopsis of the episode. So this one, I was going to have my friends um, Milk and Tea in the episode. They were going to voice lines for me, but that never came to be. And I guess that kind of also played a role in not having the whole series happen because <laughs> this is episode one and I needed other people to hop on board. So this is episode one, the after party. MT helps Milk and T clean up after the New Year's party. They remember the past and begin to think about the future. So it opens up in the living room with wrapping paper everywhere. Milk jumps out of a pile and slides down. T is seen wasted on a branch of the Christmas tree. And T is curled up in a present box before he yawns and stretches like a cat. He gets up and walks out of the box rubbing his eye. And at this point, like... I thought if I, um, I would like think of the ideas for the episode and I would take the background pictures and video and I would write some, a, a little bit of the script according to what I took a picture of and other times I would just write and then take a picture or video according to what I wrote in the script. Well, mostly for the most part, actually it was, I did, I would do it that way. So yeah, this, this is kind of like after a big Christmas party. Um, Christmas or New Year's party, I don't remember. It's pretty wild. So, good. <laughs> MT, good morning, New York City, and a flop on the ground. And T says, good morning, San Francisco. Falls off branch. Uh, milk, unintelligible mum mumbling. MT lifts face off the ground, you know, very cartoonish way. Uh, and says, we gotta, we, we gotta clean this place up. Jupiter and Saturn will align to create the first Christmas star in 800 years, which is a real fact, by the way. MT stares at T for a good while. That kind of already happened. Anyway, MT uses cartoon physics to grow to his si normal size and begin picking up uh, wrapping paper confetti. Because MT, I mean, I can I can do that in the imagination realm. Okay, I can. I'm I'm a full-on cartoon, and I'm gonna take advantage of that fact. Uh, some year, huh? <laughs> it was some I wish we could just wipe this year clean from our memories. Yeah, me too. That kind of worked, because I, I barely remember anything that happened in 2020. MT, this year was ter was terrible, but there's ought to be some good in it, right? Milk, n milk and tea both. Nope. Hmm, well, I, for one, was glad I could still go through a semester of college, even though it didn't end all that great. Yeah, both, both my first semesters of college kind of sucked. <laughs> I, I, it, it was a little weird to get onto. I, I was at least able to have a good time with my family in Spain, but it was really short compared to other years. I guess you guys are right. MT sits down and plays with a piece of wrapping paper. Milk, hey, at least we can hope this next year won't suck total ass. Milk's line isn't, it aged well gonna say it, it didn't age that badly t yeah let's just hope things get better but they could still go south just the same or more south and t i have a feeling this here won't be so southern sweet t please don't pun my name which <laughs> i totally tower 12 that line if you don't know what that means is uh when i wrote tower 12 i portrayed my friends very very correctly and and like every time i uh uh, write 
something that's very close to what they'd actually say, and it's confirmed that they would say that, then that's called Tower 12-ing it. Uh, Milk, how so? We just gotta lift our spirits is all. Uh, both of them just groan. Uh, this is a very real dynamic, by the way. I'm usually like the most positive one out of all my friends. I'm surrounded by a bunch of pessimists. You know, we haven't been on camera since that game show. What if we planned out what we do next? Or what we should do next? You mean more game show thingies about cookies? No. Could be something entirely different. Oh, oh, I know. We could play a game together, like drawing games, maybe. Or review shitty dress-up games. Oh, we should have done Gardic Phone. I don't know if Gardic Phone was around back then, but I, I wish it was. And we knew about it. MT, that sounds like fun. And super cursed. Hunger Games. Ooh, yeah, I'd love to see how that turns out. I'm gonna go do things. Just walks away. MT. Hey, the village. Uh, you guys want to go hang out there? What will we even do? I already ate so many chicken waffles. I don't need any more. Thank you. Keeps walking away. T, I can't, nor do I wish to move right now. Empty stares at T for a good while. And this is going to be like a full on like five seconds of, of Breeze fame of just me staring at T. <laughs> Seat yourselves. And then it cuts to Empty walking through the town. Uh, Via Navida. That's what the town was called. What could be the good... What could the good people of this town be up to today? MT walks up to the Creative Kids art studio. What are y'all cooking up in here? The kids look at MT and show off their cringy art. Milk is suddenly there and shows him a picture of a demon thing. Also, yeah, most of the town residents would just be like little HO scale. The, the HO scale. Are they HO? I don't know. They'd be the, the, the little minifigures that we bought for the town. And then the rest would just be... <laughs> whatever the whatever else is in my little imagination world. Yikes! What the? What are you doing here? Portraying the embodiments of sins and bad deeds to the expressiveness of art. He seems legit. MT walks out of the studio and goes over to the chicken waffle brunch house. He sits down after he orders and mopes on the table as he waits. T then comes in as a maid and delivers his order. What? The, I thought you didn't want to come. Yeah, well, I kind of work here, so I have no choice. Oh. MT walks out of the brunch house and walks over to a bench. And that, that was the that was all I had for that episode. Uh, it was just like, the rest of it, I'm pretty sure, was... Hey, I actually, I have notes. I had notes written down. House of MT episodes. Okay. No, it was just a synopsis that I wrote. Um, so... Uh, yeah, the the rest of this episode, I think, to my memory, to what I can remember, was, uh, I was gonna walk, um, yeah, I, w I went over to a bench, then Milk and Tea came out, and, uh, wondered if I was doing okay or something, and then we would improvise, like, the rest of the scene, like, I would... Okay, that's why I didn't finish the episode. Because we were going to improvise the rest of the whole thing. Um, and just kind of kind of uh, come together to think of how to finish the episode in a wholesome, positive way. Next stop is episode 2, the Hopecot Center. Uh, this one dealt with my Epcot Pavilion's OCs. Because, yes, those were, those were a thing I made. I mean, other people in the community, in the Epcot community, made their own. OCs, so I didn't find it that weird. Um, in this episode, MT and Horizons try to help her fellow pavilion friends cheer up with fun, fun indoor activities. Uh, if you watch Life of MT, you'll know who Horizons is. So, MT walks around the Christmas town and sees Horizons sitting near the central tree. Hey, Horizons, what's going on? Oh, hey, nothing much. Just everyone else has been kind of sad. Was Christmas and New Year's not good enough? It was fun. We had a blast. It's just, we're all trapped at doors and we just need a breather. You get what I'm saying? Totally. After this pandemic lifts, I'll invite everyone to walk around my college campus. How does that sound? That sounds great, but it seems like it'll be a while for now. I actually don't know why I came up with this idea. <laughs> to have my OCs walk around my college campus. I guess I just like the campus. It's, it's a cool campus. Um, 
Yeah, well, hey, nothing's stopping you from going outside now. There's no snow to play with. Walk in the woods? Nah, I'm not really in the mood. I'm just worried about the other pavilions. We were all so happy for the new year, and now it's just like we all suddenly lost hope. Where are the pavilions now? Well, anatomy in motion went to the cabin. Oh, that's not surprising. So yeah, um, to explain why it's written that way, um, I have this little cabin for the for the town, and me being me, I was a tad weirder last year, and I decided to make the cabin half cozy cabin and half straight up nightclub. Or a strip club, I don't know, something, either of the things. And my Epcot OCs, they're, they're a wild range of characters. And Anatomy and Motion are the only two that are kind of on that, on the weird side. Anatomy is self-explanatory. Uh, and Motion is just kind of that, uh, what was that meme? Uh, the slud fast, smoke grass, eat ass type character. <laughs> So, Energy Land and Sea, last I heard, were staying at the Ferrothorn Inn, and the rest, well, I don't really know, actually. Let's go find them, then. Why so? Why else? You guys, clearly you guys just need to hang out more. Come on, your horizons, you're supposed to be bright and happy. I'm surprised I'm the one trying to bring people together. Horizons brings out a cute little smile. I guess you're right. Where should we start? Let's go take care of the perverts over at the cabin. <laughs> okay, MT and Horizons... Walk over to the chest and nut cabin. <sighs> Cause that's that's what I decided to name it. It was it's the chest nut cabin. But of course, as they go in, the lobby is decorated neatly like an actual cabin with an animatronic show similar to that of the Great Wolf Lodge in the center. Cause I grew up with the Great Wolf Lodge and I don't know, I just kinda put it in there for some reason. Okay, on second thought, since you're like the young and innocent one, I'm gonna go in alone. You stay here. MT casually walks past a curtain and into a cabin-themed nightclub. MT comes across Anatomy, who seems to be partying hard without his loincloth. Anatomy! Anatomy! Wonders! Yeah, it's kind of like loud in there, so I'm gonna, I am gonna—I would be shouting. Huh? What? Horizons is looking for you! Okay, cool! We're gonna hang out and stuff. Wanna come? Sure, I guess. Let me go find Buzzy. I lost my mind. Ha <laughs> ha. For the non-Epcot nerds out there, Buzzy is, uh from an attraction called Cranium Command that was over at uh, the Wonders of Life Pavilion. Uh, if you know something at Epcot, you'll, you'll know that Buzzy is missing, so. That was a neat little reference I threw in. <laughs> Let me go find Buzzy. Buzzy kind of uh, pilots Anatomy. Uh, Anatomy and Buzzy are different characters, but Buzzy's kind of just the brain pilot, because uh, I, I love the reference there. Uh, okay, where's Motion? Somewhere in here, I don't know. Uh, there's going to be a scene possible extra seed where motion where I try and get motion out and motion's a little stubborn. A few minutes later, Horizon sits on the top of a sofa looking at the silent animatronic stage show. MT bursts out of the curtains from the nightclub room with motion and anatomy. Hey, I found them. What games? I was rocking it back there. Motion, of course, talks really fast. Buzzy jumps out of anatomy's arms. Almost read that completely wrong. But see, but that was the worst situation I ever seen through. Why'd you pilot me in there? I did it. I was out of your mind and you just walked right in. Okay, well, can I go back? No, we're going to collect a whole park and hang out together. Snore. I didn't mean to walk in there anyway. Ha, are you kidding? Dude, you would fit right in with the ladies in the back. They're all very... Anatomy interrupts him. Buzzy, where did my loincloth go? Well, if I had access to your memory, I could find out for you. It won't be that long anyway. Perhaps. It's been too long since we got to hang out for a while, all of us together. And hang out we will indeed. Buzzy goes back into Anatomy's head, motion zips around the lobby before running outside as empty and horizons follows behind. The four of them go off to the inn and to look for energy, sea, and land. Alright, you guys stay here, I'm gonna go get them. Empty goes inside the inn and finds the three in a dining room. Empty comes back outside with them. There's supposed to be a scene here where I talk to the three pavilions and convince them to go outside and hang out, but I, I think I cut it out because the episode was already dragging out long enough. And these are supposed to be like two, three, four, five minutes max. Uh, they just finished lunch. Now, where can we find everyone else? Every pavilion that stood outside was gone except for Buzzy. So, but, er, er, all the other pavilions just kind of are gone, er, except Buzzy's just standing there like, alright, now what? Land, he's kind of like this 
older grumpier guys you begged us out here for this and C says oh wait I just realized I don't think I ever gave energy any sort of dialogue in this energy's just kind of the quiet one in this scene for some reason I just, I just, sorry I just kind of realized that and then C is like an older lady a fresh breath of air is always good after a warm cup of tea I do say uh, she's not British, but she does, does love tea. <laughs> or maybe I did intend her to be like some British old lady. She is like the Queen of England. A fresh bath of air is always good for a warm cup of tea, I do say. <laughs> kind of kind of ironic coming out of you. Where did everyone go? Scene switches to empty, running over to the bottom of the Christmas tree and spots horizons with her face in her hands at the top. Empty meets her up there. And yeah, this is a Christmas tree in the actual, like, in my house, like the bigger actual tree. Hey, what happened? They got into some sort of argument already, it stormed off. That in just two minutes? That was fast. But hey, come on, we just gotta talk to them is all. Nah, they won't get along anyway. I think I'll just go back to doing my own thing. No, oh, don't say that, come on, we're so close. Let's just talk to them. Hers and stay silent. I remember this scene, a mental note, was that... There was just gotta be this a few seconds of MT having this very confused look on his face because just the atmosphere with his characters are changing. Like Horizons is usually the happy one. She's usually the very she's usually the very positive and bright one. And it's it's just weird to MT how she's how she's saying all these negative things and feeling so down. Horizons stays silent. Alright, then I will. And then a whole scene missing I assume of me going to get the other ones. Oh, I think I know where imagination is. Oh yeah, they asked where they, they were missing figment. They need to get figment. Oh, I know where I, I, I think I know where imagination is. Wait a second. Who are we missing? Twins of the big guy? Do we really have to get everyone? I mean, we really haven't hung out in a while. The group goes to MT's room. Horizons jumps into the onto the items on the cork board and taps on the figment pin. I have this figment pin from my first trip to Disney, and I thought it'd be funny if imagination resided in the figment pin. Imagination then ha happily jumps out of the image of him. Hello, friends! What brings you all to me? Hi, figs. Do you want to join us for some indoor activities? Ooh, of what kind? Uh, I actually haven't thought of that. Oh, I have many ideas. Water starts to flood the room. Everyone flies across the room and hits the Titanic poster. I have a Titanic poster in my room. The Titanic jumps out of the poster with everyone on board. And then Imagination begins to sing. I was actually going to add like a little a little song in here. So, we can, yeah, it just goes, we can go on a trip, on a great ship, Titanic crashes on top of a pile of books. Or read a book, picture to look, and see noses. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the Fifty Shades of Grey book <laughs> covers the title. Oh, that that's right. I... I may or may not have a copy. I, I got curious a few years back. And it was a mistake. Terrible book. I hate it. But I thought it was funny for one of those very awkward, weird jokes that I love so much. Um, so I noticed the book. I'm like, hey, I wait. This is supposed to be a wholesome song. And I like, cover it up. Like, that's not supposed to be there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, okay? Have some good fun. Everyone hangs out around desk shelves. I don't like the con- I, This out of context after this does not sit well. Reading back. I don't know what went through my mind writing this episode. Till you feel done. Make some new friends. Everyone sits in the Lego Central Park. Until life lends a wonderful, beautiful day. There's gonna be this uh, cool little scene where... Uh, top view where he jumps up, throws his hands out in the air like, yay! You know, beautiful end to the little song. You're right, we have many options. A laugh track plays. Which one brings you the most attention? Can we go back to <laughs> motion, being motion? Can we go back to those books? A laugh track plays. I'd, ra I'd rather go back to that in. We haven't tried the chicken and waffle house down the road. A laugh track plays. Ooh, there's an idea. You want to go back to the town? I thought you wanted to do something else. We could stop there along the way. On the way to what? We can go on a walk outside. Maybe through the woods or something. I think we need a well-deserved breath of fresh air. A laugh track plays. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Come on. 
scene changes to pictures of everyone bundling up and going outside. The Communicore twins and spaceship join them. Uh, they walk through the neighborhood and stop at, at the pond. Yeah, my organization, my neighborhood, we have this pond and we have like this big wooded area in the middle of the whole neighborhood. And you just got some little like trails in there that like, people walk in. And, yeah, I thought that'd be a nice little spot, you know, to have my characters, you know, enjoy a little walk through the woods or go to the pond. Yeah, episode ends with them back in the Christmas village, sitting on the edge of the table, looking at the sunset outside. Horizon says, I hope for tomorrow's horizons to be even brighter. Hope is a good thing, but don't hope so much. You gotta know so. And I boop Horizons on those, because I, I like to end these episodes with wholesome, positive vibes, because things, things are too weird. I, I need more wholesome content. Next episode... Uh, immediately, right off the bat, everyone's favorite episode of the series, episode 3, Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Experimentation. Uh, deals with the Rockefeller, and in this episode, MT helps the Rockefeller plan out the rest of their stage and find placeholder materials they could use. Uh, a, if you remember from the Christmas special, Billy Bob and Looney Bird were working on the stage, and uh, I kind of I kind of took that from Rockefeller Animated. The model house I used f for Rockefeller Animated is just the same as mine. And of course, in the whole this new in the House of MT world, is same house. So I just kind of transferred it over. So it starts with MT walks down the basement stairs and goes to check progress on the stage. Billy Bob and Looney Bird are working on. Hey guys, how's it going? And I'm gonna just voice them because. I'm probably not going to be able to for a while since I don't want to work on more rock fire stuff. It's going all right. We decide we will wait on props until we finish the next episode of what? Oh, oh yeah. Well, cool. Okay. What progress are you planning to make? We need tassels. They're called fringes, Looney. They're the same thing. Looks like all you need are some trees and curtains. Yep, but there's one problem. We don't have props. Perhaps we could try and find some placeholders? Uh, hey, yeah, I, I do want to be a professional designer. I can help you guys out. Come on, let's make a model. Right now? Yes, now. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, MT, Billy Bob, and Looney Bird are on the floor, um, in the basement and chunking down with a bunch of supplies in front of them. I was going to go all out on this episode and actually make like a cardboard little model of the stage and everything. Alright, let's see. Should we use cardboard or paper? Are we going to be remaking the original props or make new ones? We can explore our options. We could try both. Mitzi walks up and checks on the three. Hey guys! Now, should I use my Mitzi voice? You know, I'm gonna use my Aaron Mitzi voice. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> hey guys, what's happening? <laughs> no, that sounds like, um. That sounds like, like my Ralph. My Simpsons Ralph. Hey guys, what's happening? Hey guys. No, there we go. Carl. I'll just use Carl for Mitzi. Hey guys, what's happening? No, just planning the props for the stage. Oh, cool. Well, I'm gonna do things now. And if you haven't uh, realized already, that was gonna be this whole meme in the in the series. <laughs> I'm just gonna do things now. It skips away. Okay, anyway, let's jot down some ideas. Well, usually we're set in the forest, so what if we're set... Hmm. In a Kmart? No, wait. Circle K. Why is Circle K? I don't know. MT takes a pencil and scribbles down Circle K. Why'd you write that down? Ah, uh, just in case. How about in front of a cabin? We can expand that Smitty's vibe. MT writes down the idea. Any other ideas? Nope. Circle K! Wait, I already used that one. The three look at the list. Original, Circle K, and cabin. Alright, I think we can work with these. The three of them get to work and set up a mini model of the Circle K idea. Hey, Mitzi. Waits five seconds. Yes? Come test the stage for us. Okay. Mitzi stands on the stage and lifts her arms. Hmm. Nah, I don't like it. So, are we just scrapping it entirely? Yep. What about... Oh, wait, that's Looney. What about the model? Uh, sometimes... And then, you know, this is how episodes just, uh... One of those inspirational things for me to the audience. Sometimes when you work on projects, you just have to put some meaningless time and effort to see if something will work. If it doesn't, well, at least you tried and saw if you like 
if you really liked it or not. We can still at least repurpose as much as we can for the cabin idea. Sounds good to me. A group of four work together to build a stage. Once they finish, they take a step back and look at it. Cavern! Looks cozy! Yeah, I don't really think it fits the aesthetic. <laughs> I don't know why I had Billy Bob say aesthetic, honestly. <laughs> hmm, uh, you're right. Maybe we should go with the classic touch. What about Sun and Moon? Where you know? Where you Okay, I'm getting my Carl and Looney Bird confused. <laughs> we, we don't have them with us. We don't have them with us. Maybe we could remake them? I don't know about that. It feels kind of wrong. Well, how? Well, what if they're dead? Sunny Moon were special. It just feels weird to replace them. Because, yeah, that's right. Rock this Rock of Fire comes from Rock of Fire Animated. And, yeah, that whole story. They escaped their showbiz. And Moon is fine, but, you know, they, they turn Sun into buildings, so they're not, they, they don't know about Chuck E. Cheese, so they're, they're unsure of their whereabouts. Maybe we can put up stickers. Oh, no, wait, MT says, MT starts to walk to the side to contemplate. Maybe we could put up stickers. At least we still have Antioch. Yeah, but what will we be without the two? I think we just need the original. We can leave out the missing prop characters until we figure something out and just focus on the stage itself. Viewers focus on the characters, but what's the Rock of Fire explosion without its beautiful scenery? Other variations are cool, and having it personalized would be neat, but I feel like we should stick to the original plan. Then what was the point of testing all those stages? To learn. To learn that maybe we should stick to the Rock of Fire we know and love. Nothing beats listening to a show and having the lights come on. Scene fades into Rock of Fire replay. The curtains open, and we see you guys on stage, but also the trees and clouds behind you. You're right. As you said, different variations are cool, but I kind of like things the way they were, at least for now. Yeah, nothing can really replace the magic of the classic stage. That's, that's for sure. Classic it is. Scene goes back to the floor, the basement floor where they were. So, what will we, what will we use to build the backgrounds? I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps we could use wood and paint like you guys used for the rest of the stage. But I don't know what... But I don't know where we can get any more wood around here. I know. We can make a trip to... Depot Home! You got it. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I'll get back to you guys later for... Episode 4 filming. And unfortunately... I never did get back to them for episode 4 filming. And the episode ends with, okay, alright. Okay, see ya. And that was episode 3. <laughs> I honestly don't know why I did this episode. Um, the characters weren't even in the Christmas special. But I edited it in any way because I guess I just ran out of ideas. Episode 4. It's called Episode 4, Troublesome Troubles. Uh, it's a Thomas and Friends-based episode with Thomas James Percy. The synopsis goes that Thomas has a hard time keeping up with the newer engines on the train table and thinks he's not good enough. MT helps him see that he's special in his own ways. And I was dealing with someone with a superiority complex. I, I, I guess that's how I transfer that over to my own little Thomas story. Uh, so the episode opens up to a shot of the train table. Uh, I can't do this episode now because one, my train table is an absolute mess and my Thomas model stops running so I have to like see what's wrong with it, clean the wheels, take it up to a professional, whatever it needs to be done. And yeah, MT walks up to the table and uses his cartoon powers to shrink on into the table a train zips past him, and he walks across the rails. He then notices Thomas the Tank Engine all alone on the track. Oh, hey Thomas, what's up? Nothing much, said Thomas. And, and yet this is my voice also, <laughs> being the narrator. Because <laughs> I, I can't, I just have to do classic Thomas or it's, or it's, classic Thomas or no Thomas, okay? And I'm dealing, I, I would have been dealing with my own models, so it, it would have made sense. MT, did, did I say that? 
You know what, never mind, you seem kind of gloomy. Is everything okay? I feel like a useless engine. Thomas sounded really sad. Well, why is that? All the other engines just seem better than me. I can barely run and my wheels feel stiff. I don't want to be better than the other engines, but I do wish I could do something just as great as they can. I know that feeling, when someone or something pushes themselves out to be superior. Won't drop the fact that they're better until you feel inferior. But there's no reason to feel that way. You're unique and you can do your own great things, and that other people, or engines, probably can't. I've been sitting here alone for so long, I'm not sure what I can do right anymore. Thomas looked more sad than before. Don't you remember, Thomas? You're the one who said that little engines can do big things. Either way, I think I know how I can help. Stay right here. Trust me, I don't think I can go anywhere. And that, that, that line also didn't age badly because, yeah, my model, my Thomas model does not <laughs> run anymore. MT goes to the controls and stops the running train. He uncouples the flatbed and pushes it in front of a switch track. He goes over to flip the switch and pushes the flatbed onto the same track Thomas is on, just showing off my train table. How am I going to pull that? asked Thomas. I don't have the same couplings. No need. You're going to shunt it and push it. I'm going to put you through some training. No pun intended. MT puts the clay duke statue that I have, I made a clay duke statue, on the flatbed. Alright, here's your first task. Take this cargo and carefully get it up that... Actually, we'll wait on the hill. MT grabs a random object and places it on another part of the track. Shunt the cargo over here without having it fall or break. Okay, Thomas said excitedly. And the next scene, the entire, the rest of the episode depended on what happened next. And Thomas wouldn't run. So I couldn't finish the rest of that episode. But it would have been this nice, wholesome, you know, my own version. It, it would have been my own little Thomas the Tank Engine episode where Thomas learns to accept the best of himself. It, it's just this whole thing where teaching... How, uh, just dealing with a superior, like, dealing with feeling inferior, feeling small. Because I, myself, feel small a lot. And I feel like I, I could and should, you know, people expect so much of me. People expect that I should be, be different. I've had people expect so much of me that... I, I just don't really want to change. I already see that what I am is good enough for me. And of course, the things that aren't good enough for me, I, those are the things I change. Of course, you know, if, if it affects other people in a negative way, I change that too. But yeah, that's that's what that episode is for. And that's how the rest of the series is. Like, I, I go through and teach lessons that I've learned to teach myself through these characters. Everything that that was House of Empty, but I'm still gonna keep reading because there's just a lot of ideas, a lot of stuff that I still want to put out there. Here's another short and sweet episode that never got finished. Episode five, blocked. <laughs> this is about my Lego figures. If you're a veteran on my channel, you'll know who Dave, Kevin, Bob, Bobby, and Amelia, Amanda. What I, I wasn't Amelia. I'm pretty sure it was Amelia, not Amanda. But okay, whatever. In this episode, Dave, Kevin, and Bob tried to rebuild their and finish their Mini Cooper. In the meantime, Bobby and Amanda tried to remake their kitchen. The trio need support pieces from the duo, but the duo need pieces need the pieces for their walls. MT intervenes and tries to to try to resolve the solution. Or say to resolve the situation. Why did I write it like that? Resolve the situation. I don't know. I came in and helped. <laughs> Scene opens to Dave, Kevin, and Bob looking at the half-built Mini Cooper on the basement table. Uh, it looks a little unfinished. You think? I think we can finish it though. We just need some help getting the wheels on. Aren't those supposed to come last? Yeah, I got a point. But we could look ahead and look for a good way to raise the car up. It's a damn good car. I have lots of faith in her. All the adventures we had with her. Um, yeah, if, if you didn't know... Um, yeah, I don't think I ever said this. I... Before... I th was this before my YouTube channel? I don't know. I think this is before I got 
this is when I was first getting into stop motion animation with my Legos. And I would put, you know, Dave, Kevin, Bob through these adventures in my Lego Mini Cooper. And I'd, I had these little stop motion animations. I can't access them anymore because the tablet I had them on bricked up. tablet that I had the stop motion animations on bricked up so I kind of can't get them back but yeah I, I would just like animate these crazy adventures and they were my first stop motion animations oh man I wish I could get those back so oh yeah and they referenced that Kevin's with Kevin with his last line it's a shame we couldn't share them publicly um, he's referencing the stop motion animations they they, they knew they were and, and for them, it was like they were filming their adventures. I think that's how you went, the direction I went for that. Right, well, I'm going to go get some pieces to raise the... Bob turns around and sees Bobby and Amelia. And Amelia, it was Amelia. Okay, I, I guess I looked I looked back at the video. It was Amelia the whole time. This is Bobby and Amelia. If you're a veteran to my channel, and the videos are still up. If you haven't watched the Bobby and Amelia videos, the cooking show videos, they're, they're still up. Granted, they're very cringy, but I'm still proud of them. They're pretty funny. Um, see Bobby and Amelia rebuilding their kitchen. Next to them, a pile of loose bricks of which Bob tries to take. Hey there, friend. How's it going? Want to help us rebuild our kitchen? Re rebuild out kitchen? <laughs> Bob, I uh, actually was wondering if I could see if I could use some bricks to help us raise our car up to put the wheels on. Oh, no, you don't. We need those pieces for our kitchen walls. But we always had three walls. Now we're changing. We're remaking our kitchen into a whole three-walled room. Wait, something's not adding up. Bo oh, I think Bobby meant we always had two walls. What about the fourth wall? Two broken. I wish I finished this. I, I, I wish... I wish I went on and could finish this, Bob. I mean, it'll only be a second. We'll just pop the wheels on and bam. Oh, no. We have to get this thing done soon. Like, right now. You know, your voice sounds familiar. What are you talking about? It's always been like this. All right. Well, oh, yeah. I think Amelia was going to be voiced by me as well. Because <laughs> to stay faithful to the original, where I voiced both characters. All right. Well... We don't want trouble. We don't want to trouble you. So, guess never mind. Bob goes back to the others. That's a no. Okay then. What if we use the pieces we haven't used on the Mini Cooper yet? That could work. The three try their idea. That that's gonna fall as soon as we touch it. Any other ideas? And nope, they they, they didn't find any other ideas. That was it. Uh, pff, how is that episode gonna end? I'm pretty sure it was just going to be, I was just going to try and see what I could do with what I had and do some cat-mouse funny business. And yeah. Pretty, pretty wholesome previous two episodes compared to the next one, episode 6, which is going to be a maturity increase exclusive. So, you buckle in, everybody. i put my mic over here because I think it's too close. Keeps capturing my weird mouth sounds. Okay. <laughs> this, <laughs> before we move on, this next episode is a little bit on the horny side. Yeah, looking back, I had a much more open mind back then. Okay, I still have an open mind, but, you know, I, I know how to snap it on and off better than before. I hate that I made this episode a thing, mostly because I tied it to much friendlier episodes, regardless of the fact that it was going to be on a different channel. The episode is not pornographic at all, it's just really weird. I still value the idea though, even if it was really stupid, dumb, cringy, and I'm going to make myself read it anyway, because yeah, it's part of the series, and I can't ignore the fact that it exists. I do admit to wanting to make entertainment for adults as much as I want to be an entertainer for everyone else. 
I'd love to explore what more I can do with animation and story writing that's directed towards those that share the same dirty mind. If anyone is actually interested in that and are as curious to see what I am working on and experimenting with, I am thinking about posting to Newgrounds, where the content restrictions are a lot less harsh than they are on YouTube. And please don't be that one person that goes to find that content just to be grossed out by it and tell me to stop being horny, go to a horny jail, and beat my head with the bonk stick. I am putting that type of content on a different platform for that reason. If it's not what you want, don't go there. And please, 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 18 plus only. If I'm going to be moving to a completely different platform, a lot of filters are going to be turning off. Alright, episode 6, trying to keep it clean. The Nazi Fork special for maturity increase. If you don't want to listen to this episode, look in the description below where I'll put time marks for each chapter reading or each episode reading. And you can not suffer through this with me. Alright, so MT sits at the computer desk with his chair turned away facing Catalina and Sunflower, which are my main OCs. Uh, you probably know them from the Christmas special. Things get really lonely. <laughs> So they're behind him. Alright, so we're doing a not safe for work episode. Great. Unfortunately, you guys don't talk because I sort of sexualize you a lot. Well, in canon, you sexualize yourselves. Anyway, despite having set voices for you three in my head, I don't want to make a voice actor feel uncomfortable with that thought in mind. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's just have you hold signs. <sighs> yeah, things are gonna get weird. Things are gonna get really weird. Prepare for the worst. <laughs> This is going to be a maturity increase. <laughs> Catalina gives a cute smile and waves her tail while holding a sign that says, My idea. Yes, Cat, we know you're the one who suggested we do this one. Oh, boy. Sunflower holds out a sign. What will we do in this episode? Uh, I don't know. Catalina was the one who wanted to do this. Catalina was the one who wanted this to be some sort of not safe for work episode. Because, well, we do need more content for maturity increase. Catalina, can we cuddle? No, I'm not turning this into total porn, okay? Light cuddle, that still means sex in your world. Catalina desperately waves her tail. Sunflower, I like Catalina's idea. Yeah, the, these, what, what was going on here was I wanted to keep things as friendly as I could, but my OCs being themselves. Because, you know, they, they were... Well, actually, Sunflower was created a long time ago when I was... Lot younger she was one of my first imaginary friends and then of course when I uh, uh, into my adolescent teenage years things changed and Sunflower became this horny perverted nudist character and Catalina she was she's all she's supposed to be wholesome for the most part but you know I had this huge obsession with Neko's and of course so the characters are still very horny and I have to deal with uh, that while trying to make the episode not as dirty as I want it to be. I know you guys came out of that part of my thoughts, but can we not make it too sexual or more than it is already? Kathleen hugs. No, we're not doing funny number. We need something cleaner. <laughs> if you... If you want things to be clean, then why did we mark it as not safe for work? Because I, this is YouTube. We're not bringing our viewers to fucking Pornhub. Looks at camera and shrugs. Plus, we need to be verified. Oh yeah, that's right. Pornhub like changed their thing so only verified users could post. Don't ask me how I know that, <laughs> Catalina. How do we make a not safe for work episode without anything sexy? I don't know. You came up with the idea. <laughs> How about we start at the club down at VNW? Okay, I guess that could be a start. The three of them head over to the cabin in the village and go on inside. So, what's first? Well, this place offers rooms where and there's a nightclub. And that's also a strip club. Oh, it was both. Okay, go to strip club, but it gets too awkward. I wrote out an entire scene. 
Hey, I have a better idea. Titty Sooty. It's sexy, but also satirical, and possibly still okay under an age restriction on YouTube. Okay. Oh yeah, Titty Sooty. I'm not proud of Titty Sooty anymore. The three go inside and talk to a villager at the front desk. Ha! Welcome to Titty Sooty. Help me help. Oh yeah, there were supposed to be subtitles. Aha! Meant this. Damn, everyone's on subs around here. What does that mean? Everyone. Damn, everyone's on subs around here. Oh, sub to titles. I meant sub to titles. Damn, everyone's on sub to titles around here. Yeah, hi. I like to rent out. It's still fair. Hold up, side. One sex room, please. Read science. Slam his head on the table. Oh, oh, jeez. Sure. Yeah, one sex room, please. You know, I'm the boss here. I'll just take him over myself. Can I have a key, please? With your hands over a key. Thank you. The three of them ride the elevator and stop at the sex store. Yeah, we have the sex shop at Titty City. MT gets up and changes his form to a more human-looking version of himself. How is this? The ladies look at him with thirsty faces and MT looks back with one of panic. An outside shot of the window is shown with shadows moving in the light. Scene switches to some flowers sitting up in bed in the early morning. MT is then shown laying on the bed with Kathy Lee and cuddling with him. Why did I give you... Why did I have to give you ladies such powerful horny? Seeing cuts to the aunt's building. Last thought for today, I had enough sexual shit for one episode. The three step inside and walk and wave past the train chants. Uh, those are the train chants. They don't have voice actors yet. Oh yeah, the train chants are, um, these train ladies I made. Uh, I was going to write the story called a Relaxation Station about these train people. That would run in onsen. Uh, there's information about it on my MT Creations Discord, so if you're interested in that, that's where to go. Scene cuts to three in the onsen bath standing and watching the Jimmy's. Damn. Jimmy sure do love it here. Scene cuts to three walking through town. Well, that was interesting. What do you three want to do now? I just want to cuddle. We already did that twice. I don't know. I'm not sure how we can make this episode any more interesting. All you girls want is sex. This. Fuck that. Harder, stronger, better, faster. And Catilian and Sunflower look at each other with embarrassed faces. Can we do something wholesome and fun? Okay, maybe a little bit of fan service. Empty turns around faces Marble. Oh, Marble? She's another one of my OCs. She's the more wholesome one, though. Marble looks at Empty with the powder on her face. Where... Were you? Get over here. We were just talking about what to do next, and we're stumped. I was just on my way to get hot chocolate at the salon. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes, I heard they have better cups at the chest and nut cabin. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go back there. Okay, so far his face lights up. Marble claps while Cantilina puts on a big smile. Scene cuts to the four of them with mugs of hot chocolate in front of a fire at the chest and nut cabin. Uh, Sunflower and Catilia are both wearing skimpy Christmas outfits and cuddling up with MT. Now this is more like it. MT sips some hot cocoa and whipped cream falls onto his crotch. Sunflower and Catilia his eyes open and look at it before looking at him. Oh jeez. Oh, that was a that was a reference to a to a Doritos commercial. Yeah, we're not um, we're not gonna touch that again, ever, never. Mm mm. Moving on. Okay, uh, last few episodes should be much cleaner. Uh, this is episode 7, Trouble in Town. Um, synopsis goes at MT goes to Agate to check on Jimmy, but something strange starts to occur. Jimmy's virtual structure starts to fall apart. MT meets Dot in Tiny Town VR, who just stopped an attack from the Cyber Lord. MT and Dot came across the trio from six times, or come across the trio from six times. Together they fight a giant monster made of buildings, defeat it, and go to the Great Pug in VR chat to celebrate. So this is going to be a more Pixar themed episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> and he walks out of the gates of Titty City and down the street. Along the road, Jimmy stops by. Of course, if it's an agate, gotta start with Titty City, I guess. Uh, Jimmy, ha. MT, oh hey Jimmy, ha. The what? Ha! Huh. <laughs> Where did he go? Close up of Jimmy's face. Scene cuts to a new town made in Tiny Town VR. 
MT goes in appearing as his Tiny Town VR self, MT finds Dot in a Tiny Town VR style. In the, yeah, in the, in, okay, Dot is in a Tiny Town VR style, like she looks like the characters, and runs up to her. Dot, what's going on? He got out, the Cybern Lord, oh, uh oh. Is he that thing made out of, what are those, boats? Well, I'm not surprised. He is known for going into game worlds. Can we focus on him, please? Yeah, sure, sorry. And that was the end of the episode. So I'm just going to breeze through these. They're not going to explain much. I just explained the entire synopsis of that one. Episode 8 is called Depths. And it's about... After a tiring week or month of adventures, MT helps David Pennyfoot find his laptop so Melvin could help him program his dog. Melvin was going to have a little animatronic dog. In the depths of the toy room, MT, David, and Melvin encounter many strange oddities and potential enemies. Yeah, uh, we still have like some of our childhood toys in this big storage room, so I thought that would be an interesting episode setting. So, MT comes downstairs with a tired look on his face. He wipes his eyes and walks over to the table. Uh, Melvin, appearing in real form, sits on the table with his dog and David Pennyfoot next to him. Yeah, David Pennyfoot was gonna make a huge comeback. If you don't know what David Pennyfoot is, it's a stop motion animation I made years ago. It's still on my channel if you're interested in that. Uh, Melvin, hello! We're trying to get my pet and dog working, but we need a programming source. That's a dog? Yeah, well, it's going to be. Actually, it's a good thing you're here. We could really use some help finding his laptop to program it. Can't you just use the gaming computer or record the movements by recording it? Well, yes. Because he's made out of mechanoid, uh, the mechanoid stuff, and that's where you move it physically, and it'll record that. Well, yes, but it would be a very interesting short... It would be a very short episode if we did. Uh, it's kind of a very short episode anyway. <laughs> MT, looking through papers of scripts? Okay, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> David, where did you last see your laptop? Holds up a sign, because he doesn't talk. With the props from that film we did so long ago. In the box in the toy room. YouTube with the signs? To be fair, you never gave him a voice, or your own voice at least. Right, okay, let's go. The rest of that episode was going to be interesting. We'd encounter some of my old childhood toys. There was going to be a Transformer um, character as well that I want to introduce. I might bring him back in Life of MT somehow, honestly. And yeah, then came episode 9, Time to Bounce. This is the comeback of Bouncy Ball. And Bob and his army, which are another animated thing that I made. Two animated series I made when it got into animation. Troubles start in the Christmas village when Red Bob turn, returns from his disappearance. He wreaks havoc and it's up to Bob to stop him with the help of his army and a returning bouncy friend. That's the synopsis. Scene opens up with background people running away from everything getting covered in a mysterious red material. I promise it's not what you think it is. Bob steps in and fades and faces Red Bob. Bob points at him and a bunch of blue bobs go after him. MT steps in to see what's going on. What the why are the bobs fighting again? The blue bobs step into the red material but get sucked in and absorbed. Red Bob steps over to Bob after there's a lot of bobs going on here. After a few moments of silence, Red Bob punches Bob. Um, T, uh oh, we're gonna need a good old classic MT. <laughs> we're gonna need a good old classic Mining Creeper 2 style fight animation for this one. Following fight scene will be entirely improvised and will result in trees being knocked down and snow being misplaced. Even if they eventually reach the Christmas tree, they fight on the, the actual Christmas tree. They fight on the train and knock down many ornaments. Um, there is a note for this one. After fight on train, Red Bob climbs up tree and Bob gets thrown off train. He gets up and flies straight into the tree to catch Red Bob. 
old scene is recreated at the star. The old scene from the one Christmas special for Bob Zarby. Old scene is recreated at the star before Bob is punched off but is saved by Bouncy Ball. Bouncy Ball wins the day with his powers and absolute madness. Episode ends with the move on appearing from behind the tree and turning Red Bob to dust. So the move on, he's going to be very important in um, in Life of MT. He, the re he's the reason why I made this whole House of MT video that you're watching right now. This is why I'm going through all the old House of MT stuff. Is because the move on is a very important, crucial character. An enemy that will show up in Life of MT. And I thought his introduction was just the best in House of MT. So yeah. What is the move on? We're going to find out in episode 10. All coming together. Um, set of characters, all. Synopsis, a new foe rises and threatens the well-being of the entire household. Scene opens to a dark and stormy night on Agate. Dot, Melvin, Empty, and Jimmy gather gather around and keeps beans, which is uh, it keeps beans is just a bean coffee a coffee shop that uh, our friend John made. What is, what was that thing? I have an idea on what it could be. It might be the creature known as the Move On. It's a creature that manifests from excess holiday spirit. Almost that Holy Spirit. <laughs> How do you guys know about this? It's your realm of imagination. You created it. But I didn't? How do we stop it? You have to move on. From what? Christmas. Oh. I, I see. I gotta go back out there. A lot of the others probably need our help. The Inevidath is in trouble. I may be among the best heroes, but it's up to you to stop them. MT starts for the door. Wait, no, it's not up to me. It's up to us. But stay here, I'll come back once I have a plan. MT jumps out of the VR headset and runs over to the table where the Lego people are hiding in the Mini Cooper. MT notices and quickly hops inside. Hey guys, is everything okay? Yep, totally, just hiding out. Okay, great. I'm going out there, but don't be afraid to come out whenever. We're going to fight this thing together. You want us to go out there and die? No, but, like, if I fight and die, everyone else dies, and I just need backup. That's fair. Good, thanks, bye. MT runs out of the car and runs past a closed, curtained array stage, rock of fire stage, and up the stairs. Horizons rushes over to MT after he goes up the stairs. MT, he's in the tree again. MT runs over the tree. Where in the tree is he? At the top, he's destroying everything. The tree is shown with its lights off. Ornaments rain down from the tree. Oh my god, it- Horizons. We're trying to fight the creature, but it's useless. It's unstoppable. Daryl from six times flies out the tree, flies out of the tree and lands next to MT. It's no use. He's too powerful. I don't remember what Daryl's voice was going to sound like. It's no use. He's too powerful. Bob runs in with his army. Bob is seen with bandages and a missing arm. Bob, no, that thing will disintegrate you. I have an idea. That thing has been in the tree for like half an hour already. What if we try to direct him away? The train! Perfect. Bob, get your army to reform the tracks. Load it up with ornaments and we will lure that thing out with the train. I'll hold the creature off. Okay, be careful. MT runs over to the train and turns it back on. He gets the remote going and warms up the train. Horizons attacks the creature. I don't remember how Horizons attacked creatures. At the at the point of this recording, I'm working on a new story called The Spirits of the Epcot Center. It's based on my human Epcot OCs, uh, where they are just humanized spirits of the pavilion. I know it sounds really stupid, but it's something I'm very invested in. And I, I, I might release it someday as a... Uh, is it a story, written story or comic? I don't know. I knew I wanted the, the, the characters to like be able to fight or have like weapons or something. I'm not sure what they'll be fighting or why they have weapons. I'm just trying to think. I'm just confusing myself right here. Why? How Horizons would attack? Maybe, I don't know, some beams or something. <laughs> Could be whatever. As the track gets set up, everyone hops on board the train and drive it along the tracks away from the tree the move on reveals himself by appearing from behind the tree oh yeah do i have art i think i have art of the move on 
I'll probably put it on the screen, maybe. I'm just going to give some time to show what the move on looks like. I'm pretty sure I had some sort of pictures or something of them. Move on. Escaping won't do you any good. I don't know. Yeah, it was going to have like this voice modded voice or whatever. There's this dark. Escaping you. Escaping won't do you any good. The Polar Express runs off the rails and onto the carpet. Yeah, the, the move on is just this typical dark monster thing. The tree begins to fall and lands onto the train. Everyone narrowly escapes the wreck. Well, there goes the tree. Hey, it's okay. Oh, this is like a... he was supposed to be more sad. Well, there goes the tree. Hey, it's okay. Next year we'll put up that tree and decorate to be the most beautiful tree I've ever put up. Horizons, of course, being our usual positive self. That'd be great, but I'm not worried about losing our extended Christmas spirit. I'm worried about you guys. Come on, we gotta get to the village. Horizon stares at the Horizon symbol ornament still hanging from the tree. Our hopes still stand strong. Empty Horizons, Bob, and his army, and get chased by... What? What, what, what is my writing here? Okay. Empty Horizons, Bob, and his army, run and get... Oh, and get chased by the move on. Okay, that was me. That was, I just read that wrong. I didn't write it wrong. We move on over to Via Navidad. Once they arrive, everyone appears. What the? How did everyone get here so fast? I decided to gather everyone up. And you were right about having to fight this thing, so yeah. Dead silence follows for five seconds. Okay, great. We're under a bit of a time crunch anyway, so we're gonna have to fight that guy now. <laughs> bit of a time crunch, even after like five whole ass seconds of... Uh, of silence and move on. This is unprecedented. What is your deal? Why are you destroying everyone and everything? It is my duty to start and stop this celebration of Christmas whenever necessary, as with any other holiday. Now it is my call to act upon that duty. Why does it even matter to you? So what? We kept our Christmas spirit a little longer. We're all happy in our little... We're all really happy in our town. I don't care. You will comply, or force will be applied. Dot runs up and takes a shot. The move on dodges it and turns the background people into plastic. The background people are the little figurines from our town. Ah, oh, nuts, we're screwed. Anyone have any ideas? The snow blanket suddenly disappears, leaving everyone in the f with the foam board ground. The whole town starts disintegrating, and I remember taking background pictures as we were actually taking the the village down and to put it away back in storage. I gave you the option to stand back. I guess I wasn't clear enough. And then T, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't paying attention. Hey, didn't I draw you once? <laughs> milk. Because Milk likes drawing, or at least they like drawing uh, very edgy stuff. But cool stuff. Like, they're, they're a cool artist. I have no patience to test on. Your efforts are weak against mine. Okay, I swear I don't remember creating or imagining this demon thing. Now is not really the time to question why this thing is here. What matters is protecting your village. You're right. Everybody, I don't really know how to advance the episode from here, to be honest, so... Attack! Everyone runs towards the move-on and climbs his legs. The move-on shakes them off and runs over to the center of the town. He rolls up the brick center and throws it onto the crowd, humorously squishing MT in the process. Kevin goes over and holds onto his leg. The move on grabs him and squeezes him in his fist. Bob, Kevin! I think I'm in trouble! Those who dare interfere shall experience the peak of my power. You know, that's a good voice. I like that voice for the move on. But of course, maybe with some special effects, because I, I just know looking back through the audio, it's going to be a little... <laughs> little hard to listen to. Kevin slowly turns into his Lego self. 
Save the town for us, friends. I believe in you. A plastic lifeless Kevin drops into onto the foam board. Oh my god, he killed Kevin! Nice little South Park reference there. You know what the most awkward part about this is? Nearly everyone has my voice. Stop with the fourth wall. <laughs> Stop with the fourth wall. Now's not the time. I don't, I don't know if I was going to get actual voice actors or maybe do that whole, like, thought thinking that I do in Life of MT where it's just, like, subtitled dialogue and what it actually is is just speaking through thought. Because uh, that, that's how I talked to my imaginary friends when I was little. I would speak to them through thinking. Just do not seem insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, Life of MT already does enough of that. Horizons lifts into the air, her eyes go white, and armor forms around her. Oh yeah, I'm actually always thought about giving them armor, so I gotta think about that for my new story as well. Just a note for myself. The move on pokes her and turns her into a candle. Ah! My favorite emotional support character! Which is true, I do use Horizons as my emotional support character, just as my voice of reason, uh, my voice of positivity. You're what? Uh, I love you guys too. I'm in, uh, ugh, I guess I have no choice. MT runs up and charges his powers. What is he doing now? I have no idea. He's been bottling up his own powers. He's, he's going to finally unleash them. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cringy. Okay, that's not fair. He gets some, he gets some sort of crazy power, but all I'm able to do is bend the Lipton Ice Southern Sweet Tea. MT stands in midair next to the move on's face. If I were you, I'd already give up. Yeah, here's the thing about that. MT starts to walk and mirror towards him. Is he Jesus? I somehow created you. And you know what they say. I give you life, I can take it from you. MT squints his eyes. And there's just this awkward pause. Okay, or not, apparently. I am beyond your control. My intentions are so concrete, nothing can break my sheer will to do what I was called on to do. Called? By who? Me. Okay, what if we came to a compromise? You turn my friends back into how they were and I'll let you take the village. Oh my god, I'm getting lightheaded from doing the voice. <laughs> Why would you do that? You were so set on keeping it around. Why do you give it up so fast? Because as much as people were probably waiting for an epic fight scene, and honestly, I got a bit excited too. I don't want anyone to get hurt. MT looks down at everyone else. This is where the emotional scene comes in. The emotional climax. I love our village. But... What made it so special was sharing it with those I love. If I had to choose either one, I'd pick my friends. Pathetic. You're so cringy. I've been watching you this entire time. You are a pathetic, childish excuse of a creator. Well, it doesn't matter to me what you think. I had fun these past few weeks, and that's what... that's all that really matters. Your words don't touch me. These friends are not real. You made them to accompany your sad, lonely life. No one really likes you. Look around. Most of your characters' voices resemble that of your own. It's pathetic. Why do you waste your time with physically nothing? So yeah, uh, move on is getting a little deep. Speaking from the heart there, uh, and MT is doing the same. This is the real epic fight, at least for me. I have real friends, but you gotta understand, this is it's this pandemic that's keeping us apart. But in the meantime, I was able to create a world, a world to help me through this separation. If people find that weird and stupid, that's because they're not me. They don't know what it's like. They're used to their own normal ways and expect the same from everyone else. It's okay to be weird in such a way. It's okay to be different. 
It's okay to stand out. My case is not insane. I have imaginary friends, a lot of people do. But to me, they still feel real. And I love them all. And of course, you know, my case, like, and, you know, real talk has never been about, like, you know, choosing imaginary friends over real friends. You know, I, I always, when I get the chance, I always hang out with my real friends. I always talk to my real friends, you know. It's just those special occasions where I'm lonely, bored, or whatever. You know, I call in some imaginary help to bring on some motivation or cure some boredom. We move on stairs at empty in silence. He then pokes horizons in Kevin and turns them back. Scene changes to everything in their boxes. Everyone reuniting after the move on has done his work. Horizons runs over to MT and hugs him. I'm so glad you're okay, but why did you give up the whole village? I realize that we don't need to keep the Christmas spirit around to be happy. Because what really makes me happy is you guys. At least in the time being during these lonely holidays. To be frank, I think it was just ready. Ready to do what? Ready to move on. Horizons gives MT a warm smile. MT walks out to the rest of the crowd with a snappy instrumental of most wonderful time. How's everyone doing? Everyone begins to crowd around. I'm okay, I guess. I'm still confused. Hey, are we gonna have more dialogue? Only if you're up for more adventure. And Mitzi, oh my god, I gotta bring the Carl back. I forgot your nice pom-pom, Johnny Bay. We were thinking about doing our first practice tonight. Awesome, can't wait to see it. Thomas chugs into the scene. I learned to shut off the tracks, Thomas said proudly. Nice. Just don't hurt yourself. We've done some thinking and I think we're going to bring back our cooking show. This time with a better resolution camera. I'll be sure to check it out, Bob. Uh, we're ready to take our mini Cooper out. This is... Yeah, still Legos. Wait, hang on. Oh, this is Bobby. And this is the the three minifigure Bob. Oh, oh my god, there are so many Bobs. I just love the name Bob for some reason. So, this is uh, Bob Kevin David Bob. We're ready to take your mini Cooper out for, for a spin someday if you'd like to join us. Hopefully we don't encounter the cat again. <laughs> Chances are we will, but it's worth a shot. <laughs> I wish you luck. Sunflower walks in with a sign. Cuddles later? Uh, sure, maybe later tonight. Dot, want to play some pixel rips? 89 or 95? 95, level 3, be there. Or, be, or and both of them, be square. Ha, <laughs> you too, Jimmy. No homo. <laughs> Frederick, oh yeah, from six times. Are we still scheduled for season two? Um, how about this? Next series we release will be season one. If it does well, I'll call you guys up for filming. Awesome. And, um, yeah, I, I always plan. I actually always planned uh, six seasons of six times when I can. Melvin and David, Betty Foot, walk up. Hey, can we get our dog working by next week? David, David here is pretty excited about programming, and I'm kind of excited to have some robotic company, other than those animal things. Empty glass. Empty or no? Melvin glances at the rocket fire explosion. Oh, he's referring to the rocket fire as those animal things. Sure thing, buddy. Red Bob, now back to life, walks up to MT and holds out his hand. MT hesitates, but eventually shakes his hand. Bob, his army, and bouncy ball come from behind. These past few weeks, I may have been the one helping everyone out. But in a very easily foreseen twist of events, you guys taught me the importance of sticking together. Thank you to everyone. Empty turns to Horizons and let us have a wonderful time here at the House of Empty. And that's it. That was Life of Empty. And I'm still proud of it. The whole series. Even though episode 6 I, I kind of actually really hate that I made. You know, I, I really hate that I kind of tied some of that lewd stuff in with the wholesome stuff. I'm gonna do my best to not do that in future stuff, but I'm still I'm still proud of the whole series. I felt really accomplished with the script, and I felt like it was gonna be an amazing series. And gosh, I really want to do it. 
I might still animate some things here and there. You know, I might still do some uh, work from on it for fun, maybe little clips and stuff. Maybe the last episode, I'll still do that. I have like all the reference pictures I need to do it. No, I might still do it actually. Um, though, you know, my main focus now is Life of MT. I really love where Life of MT is going. A lot, I got a lot more scripted. I'm really proud of that series and how you know, the written portion is is looking. Uh, and the animated portion as well. So I, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, if there's anything else, I'll just put it in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed if you actually sat through all this. <laughs> and um, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I would have I would have put this out on Christmas, but um, yeah, I know how everyone loves Christmas as soon as Thanksgiving is over so and I might do something else more special for Christmas uh, that's that's it that's House of Empty and it, that's where Life of Empty came from as well because I love that concept that came out of House of Empty and the Christmas special so yeah now it's out there now you know House of Empty Okay, I'm dragging this out. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, here, have some memes. Have some memes that I randomly put in the thing. I don't know why I have these. I just, I thought I was gonna make this more shitpost-like. Here are some memes. You can I don't understand how people can think that boiling a bunch of... I don't know, wheat or flour or whatever it is for eight to 10 minutes in long noodle-like strands and then pouring tomato paste on top of it can constitute as a meal. Please help me. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got, it's another death threat. Hey, it's the end of the evening. No, you only live once, so eat ass, smoke fast, sweat fast. Go down to the restaurant, I will call the police on you. Go! Go! There you go! Sled gang! Sled gang! <laughs> Sled gang! Sled gang! What's up, man? Buzz? Is that you? Are you okay? Don't come in here, bro! Damn. Jamie sure do love it here.